Well, hi everybody and welcome, as we said, great to have you here. We've got people here from all over the place. And so we're gonna have a great night tonight. We're just gonna be sharing about how we hear from God and uh, how we can develop that within our lives. And uh, we're excited about that because if you can hear from God and be confident in hearing from God, that can change, well, every area of your life, really. You know, it's an exciting thing. God has a lot to say. Uh, and uh, it, it's good to be able to hear him and be confident in it that he's hearing, or we're hearing him speak directly to us as individuals. So welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us. And, and we have people here with us from all different uh, uh, dynamics, I guess. So we've got some people that, you know, that have been part of Destiny Strategies for a long time. We've got team members uh, that you'll get to meet shortly. We've got people that have that have uh, been part of our, uh, the, some of you have done our schools, but many of you are, are not, uh, haven't really, um, probably are quite new. Maybe some of you are quite new to, to, um, to Destiny Strategies and maybe someone else invited you. So, so it's, um, Phil and Laura Lee here. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, so uh, we're Destiny Strategies yeah. Prophetic Ministry. I just wanted to do a very quick... Yeah, we just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, an introduction, who we are, what, who are these guys really? And uh, so we just wanted to, to uh, just give you a little bit of background. We've been uh, involved in, in uh, with Destiny Strategies for over 20 years now. And, and what we do is we basically run a, a ministry that helps people to hear God's voice and move in spiritual gifts and, and that will help to build your faith and we call it uh, we call it prophetic ministry if you like because if we're hearing from God and uh, acting on that then we're being prophetic. So we've been doing this for over 20 years. We run a lot of seminars and conferences uh, both nationally and internationally. Uh, we teach on moving in spiritual gifts as I mentioned. We run um, different prophetic events, development days, uh, this style of thing where it's an introduction so you can, uh, you know, have a, uh, a greater understanding and, and uh, learn to hear God for yourself and have a go at it. Because what we teach, we actually give you the practical application of that as well. And that's very important. Yeah, awesome. And, uh, and, and, and guess what? Tonight we're actually international. So I think we've got people here from Kenya with us. We've got people from Hong Kong. Hi, welcome. We've got people from, is it Netherlands? Uh, yeah, I think uh, um, I think there's there's uh, people coming from there, and also um, Serbia, I think. Slovenia. Slovenia, somewhere over there in Europe. So that's exciting. Yeah. So uh, some of the other things that we do, we run a prophetic activation school, and we do that. Uh, that's a that's uh, basically fifty weeks of of uh, part theory, part practical, where we really learn to become more confident in hearing from God. And a lot of that is the practice that will develop that confidence within you. And so we're gonna be doing a little bit of that tonight. We're gonna to touch on it, just to give you a, a taste of that. Um, we also do dream seminars. We do a lot of personal prophecy. We, we run teams that, uh, that go into different events, Christian events where they'll prophesy over a lot of the delegates. Uh, we do business prophecies. We do a whole bunch of different things, um, all about, hearing from God, you know, and that's great. Uh, and so part of our DNA is not only to talk about uh, the subject and not only to give you a lot of theory, uh, but also to have, to advise and, and to direct and, and to encourage you in, in actual practical outworking of the things that we teach on. So we always love to give the equivalent of practical and those of you that have been part of um, our schools or, or any seminars in the past, or, um, you know, have already probably experienced that. So again, tonight, we're gonna do the same thing, probably uh, shortly where um, as part of the meeting, we're going to utilize the Zoom breakout rooms. And, uh, and, and uh, we've, we've done a little bit of that uh, before. Um, uh, and, and we're going to utilise the, the breakout rooms and, and cause smaller groups where we've got some team leaders that have uh, been doing this stuff with us for many, many years now. Many of you know who they are as well. And, uh, and so uh, we're, we're going to do a group dynamic, a, a whole as, as one group uh, for a little while. But then later on, we're going to give you the opportunity to break up into small groups. 
uh, where uh, the, the leaders are going to guide you as well. And, uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, we'll probably ask you if possible later on in, in the group dynamic to, to maybe put your videos on or at least uh, your name so that, uh, you know, and, and introduce yourself. And, and at that time, we'll ask you to unmute. But while, um, while Phil and I are speaking, if we can just stay muted just because, uh, the sounds of different, uh, you know, backgrounds can bounce off each other and cause it impossible to sort of for people to hear. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 be. Uh, we're so excited that you're here with us. So, at the moment in the room, there's uh, 48 people, and that's exciting. Uh, and I, you know, I really believe that there is a hunger at this time. God is uh, developing people, causing deliberately causing a spiritual hunger, and and deliberately causing. Uh, it, and that's why you're here in this room, that you would be hungry to know the voice of God, hungry to be uh, be aware of God, what God is saying for yourself personally, but also for the body of Christ. And 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 so uh, I just feel like that, you know, well done for being in this room, really, and uh, and know that, that uh, God is going to reveal himself in a very unique way. And so have that expectancy. Have an expectancy to receive from God today for yourself personally. Many of you may have come with questions and, and desires and, and, and maybe even disappointments and, and, uh, and, and confusion. And so know that God is here to meet you exactly where you're at. And I'm excited about that because we, when, when as a team, when we're praying, we're really feeling that God has some very personal encounters for people tonight and, and, and is excited to, to reveal his love to each and every one of us. So have that expectation because God is so wanting to lift his people up at this time that we are, the Bible says that we're seated in heavenly places and so that we could become aware of that and be lifted up in, a, in, a, in what God has for us. Awesome. So we just wanted to um, start with a little bit of teaching and, and Phil and I, you know, we love this space a little bit. We like to bounce off each other and uh, fill in each other's gaps and what yeah, have you. Yeah, and sure. and so um, just, to, just to begin with, I guess, as as we've alluded to, uh, we, we're called Destiny Strategies Prophetic Ministry and uh, we are a prophetic ministry. And so as part of our our DNA, we have different prophetic guidelines to be aware of, and they may not necessarily directly apply to what we're doing tonight, but it's it's something to be aware of because these guidelines help to bring safety and maturity and, and, and also uh, hopefully uh, disable any problems that unfortunately in the past, prophetic and spiritual things have been misunderstood and people have used it incorrectly and for their own benefit instead of God's benefit. Sadly, people in the past have done the God says and uh, and it really, God wasn't saying it at all and it caused damage and uh, and, and problems. And so so we have these uh, prophetic guidelines that we always like to uh, to bring up front, to bring an understanding and to uh, to cause to cause you to um to know to it's good to know uh, what what the boundaries are. I feel boundaries are in every part of our lives. Sometimes they're not as uh, obvious. So it's it's good to know that they that these boundaries and guidelines can bring safety to you as a prophetic person and as a spiritual person that's wanting to hear from God because spirituality is meant to be a normal thing and uh, and so so uh, and not a, not a, a weird thing that is is uh, is not manageable but actually God is a God of order and so our first guideline as you can see there on the screen is what we say is a no car park prophecies and and, that, and that's a bit of a thing that we you know like to uh, like to uh, say no car park prophecies yeah and, and no one's in a car park at the moment obviously no lounge room prophecies at the moment and uh, so these are prophecies that are given outside of proper oversight and and, uh, and they do not allow the person sharing or the person receiving the word safety and discernment in this important area. So it's, it's important that we remain teachable and that we remain accountable for, for what God is saying and, and allow ourselves to be in a position of safety, uh, that there is, um, you know, checks and balances and uh, everything that we do prophetic as, as a prophetic ministry that's been, you know, we've been functioning in the prophetic for, for 20 years now, we, we still remain very accountable. We, we make sure that 
that we're under proper oversight. Any time that we're in prophetic um, ministry and, and doing the act of prophetic ministry, and and we always want to be aware of the safety and the dynamic of our. Uh, of keeping the integrity of the prophetic so that's yeah, that's yeah. just a um, important, yeah. Yeah. We, we found look over the years we found that that having these guidelines will really help people to mature not only in themselves in their their uh their own understanding of hearing from god and and in prophecy and how that should operate but it helps to protect you from things that may not be as good as it could be um, and, and look, there's space to practice, and that's part of what we do as well, because there is a learning process. But these guidelines will help you actually mature better than not having them. And we found that over and over. We've been doing this, as I said, for over 20 years, and it does make a difference. It, and, and those guidelines there will keep you safe. And we actually refer to it like a fence. You know, if, 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 um, if you've got a fence around your property, the, the, the children can run out there and they can run around, do whatever they want within that fence. If they go outside of the fence, oftentimes that's where the danger is. They could be hit by a car. They, they might, you know, uh, someone else could pinch them. There's all sorts of other things that can happen. But within that fence or that boundary area, that's a safe place for them. And, and, and that's why we have these guidelines. It's a protection. And, and it, it actually, we found that by having that, People grow and mature in God much faster. They learn to be able to hear God, uh, not able to hear God, but understand how to, to bring prophecy and bring words for other people in a very safe environment. Mm. Yeah, so another one is uh, be edifying. Be edifying, that's right. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation and comfort. So that's, that's, that's our guidelines. Now, that's pretty simple guidelines. Edification is building someone up. Uh, exhorting is to encourage people, and, and comfort is, is bringing comfort to people that need that you know that that uh, that comfort around them. And, and so, if we stay within those guidelines, if our prophecy uh, is about building someone up, it is about encouraging people and, and bringing comfort to those that are you know feeling a little bit down, then that's the very nature of God right there. You know, yeah. prophecy is not what we're doing. This is a, this is a, a message to the saints. So the, the, these are the guidelines that we will operate within is building someone up, encouraging someone and bringing comfort to people. So that's the very guidelines that we follow. The biblical guidelines, that's what it's about. Yeah. So uh, we're talking about, you know, we're using the word uh, prophetic a lot. And, and of course, this seminar is called Hearing God's Voice. But what we've found is that as you deliberately hone in your prophetic gift, then that actually gives you confidence and enlarges your capacity to hear God's voice. And, and we found that, and we found that to, to the evidence of that over and over again, and, uh, and that developing the prophetic gift in your life causes you to hear God's voice in greater confidence for yourself and then in turn causes you to be an encouragement to other people in the in in a, other in the body of Christ and then and then uh, progressively may cause you also to to have a relevant prophetic word for those people that don't know Jesus quite yet and that's yeah, that's exactly. always amazing yeah and that needs to be done the right way doesn't it otherwise it's, you know people think you're weird yeah, and uh, unfortunately, the prophetic in general has had that sort of taint, I guess, in the past. And and part of what we want to do is we want to be able to bring the integrity back, not only within the church but also outside. Mm. And there's a lot of people outside want to hear from God. Believe me, we mm. do a lot of that as well. Mm. Yeah. So um. So yeah. So we have these um appropriate prophetic behaviour, and again, we that we found that these help uh, stabilise and bring maturity to to the prophetic behaviour as it is. Um, again, in the past, and, and maybe or maybe not, you've experienced some of this, and hope you haven't. But unfortunately, many of us have. We've seen uh, you know quite destructive so-called prophetic behaviour. People saying they're being prophetic when really they're dishonouring God and not representing the nature of God correctly. But also so part of our growth in understanding God's voice and growing in the prophetic, uh, we are we have different. Um, you know, God stretches us in different ways, and and we can we can be teachable and uh, and and be aware of what God is saying. Someone, someone's trying someone's to get in. Someone's trying I'm just to not get sure in. Can one of works. our hosts um, 
guys, can you? Yep, are, are we good? Yeah, and actually, yeah. and and um, Rebecca, I can't find the chat. So if someone's chatting, please chat back to them. <laughs> so um, if someone's doing a chat, I can't actually find it. It's not yeah, okay. working. Right. Um, so yeah, so one of them, obviously, for a prophetic person, uh, is um to stay teachable. Um, it's extremely important to maintain a submissive and teachable spirit towards towards our leadership. God gives us right leadership, and towards our um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the people that He's given us to help encourage and to to grow us and to protect and guide us. And so always remain, even in the growth stages and the stretch stages where God's might be even transitioning you and changing you, it's important that we stay teachable and allow different voices and the right voices to speak into our lives. Yeah, that's very important because oftentimes we, we've had teaching in the past and, uh, and sometimes we're locked into a specific way of thinking. And, and so sometimes it, it's uh, some of the things we've learned in the past aren't always true well they aren't always right and, and so if we're locked into this particular way of thinking or this is only this is the only way god will move and and that sort of thing uh that can can stop us growing and maturing and hearing things from god that can change our life because it, it, it god places a lot of people around us to teach us but it, it's it's we've got to be teachable to accept that and sometimes that's a process you know it's for me it certainly has been you know, renew, renewing my mind, uh, and the Bible talks a lot about that, is, is a process that I'm forever working on. Uh, you know, there's always something that's coming up and I think, oh, I've got that together now. Mm. And I need to find that there's another wall there that might, in my mind that I've got to get through. Yeah, that's good. Um, Rebecca, there's a couple of people that are messaging us on Facebook. Rebecca's our um, ministry um, manager. Uh, so, uh, there's a couple of people on Facebook. Uh, Leslie is messaging, I think, trying to work out how to get on or something. Maybe she can't find the link. Would you mind helping her or something? Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah so there's a couple of people. We're just, just working through those teething problems. It's all good. Yeah, so what did yeah. you get up to? Uh, we, were staying to we were talking about staying teachable. Mm -hmm. And so what we found there too, like the, these behaviours are, are certainly a way that will help you to mature as well. So God has put people around us to help us to grow. And, uh, and look, uh, as I say to everybody, you know, the, it, the way to grow is to ask questions. And sometimes, our, you know, I, I can remember sitting in meetings and you know, listening to this preacher and he's talking about things and saying, ah, oh, that's wrong. I, no, he's wrong. I'm going to look that up and check it. And I look it up and I check it. No idea. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm wrong. He is right. Uh, uh, and so, you know, we're going to be using a lot of Bible verses there. But... That's a good thing. That's a good thing to check what's being taught. Yeah, it's good. Don't just accept everything you hear. Go and check it for yourself. Mm. And so, and to me, I, I think that's a great sign of maturity. So be teachable. That's that's what we're saying. Yeah. Now. And we always say um, with prophetic words, uh, always give personal prophetic words where, where they're, you feel like they're a simple thing or, or a, you know, elaborate thing or might even be something that you're feeling very passionate about. A, prophet, a mature prophetic person can hold a prophetic word till it's the right time and till also the room is made for them. So sometimes in our passion and our zeal that can um, almost cause uh, problems on its own and, and, uh, and, and misunderstanding. So I've known of prophets that have actually held a very strong directive and uh, you know words for for a certain um, other ministers that you know that are even to build them up or, or to you know to catapult them forward but they've I had to wait for the right time. I've known one particular prophet that's ha had to hold on to a word. Was it 10 years before he was mm, allowed yeah, to give it? Yeah, and, yeah. and he had to actually allow it to mature in him before. And, and I had to allow the leadership to be ready for it. And then the right time, it was perfect. Yeah, so, yeah. so sometimes we get a bit, uh, you know, oh, God's showing me this now. So I must go and mm. disrupt the meeting or jump on someone and... Do what yeah, God yeah. says, and, and and of course you can give words of encouragement, you know, without being doing the God says, um, but you know, uh, and God might be saying something to you or wanting to say something through you, but we want to be careful not to use that loosely, and 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 yeah. always uh, yeah. allow prophetic words, and and even this is a guideline for you if you find that you've got someone around you that's very, you know, 
that way that we've described, wanting to prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. If, you know, sometimes people are so zealous, they come, oh, I've got a word for you, I must prophesy now. And, and, and actually they might be in the car park and they mightn't want anyone else to hear. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's warning bells on its way. And they might, might not want to record it, that's another warning bell. And so you, with these guidelines to honour God, you want to say, well, no, actually, I only want to receive prophetic words under ministerial supervision. And that provides integrity and honour and and, uh, and and protects you as well from a misinformed or a misunderstanding or someone actually putting their own agenda on you and using God says when he didn't really say it at all. Yeah, that's right. It protects you and, and it shows your submission to someone who has more of spiritual authority than you as well. So you, whoever that person is, if it's your pastor, for example, if you take that step, then they're going to recognise that you're trying to do things the right way. You want to be protected. And that's their job as a shepherd to protect you as mm -hmm. part of their their church. Uh, so that's, it's a key thing. You know, they, we, we think, oh, you just be teachable. But these things are, are quite significant and will make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. And and so another our third point there is review any personal prophecy you received from others with your leadership. And so personal prophecy, when we've received prophecy, it should always be recorded because and, and that's one of our protocols as well, that we, we don't allow any prophecies unless they're recorded, except for in a practice time, which we're going to do a little bit of practice tonight. So there won't be actual prophecies recorded because when there's a practice time, you've got to have room to practice. You've got to have room to yeah. get it right, or you've got to have room to stretch, or you know. That, that, so, so when it's a practice, we don't record. But when it's a, a prophecy that is being delivered from team, or or a, a, you know, in, in you know, graduated students, we always, uh, if they're representing destiny strategies, that prophecies are always recorded, and uh, and and so that's that's important for you to even apply that to your own life because. If you have a three minute prophecy, you're only going to remember a certain amount and you're going to have multiple voices going on in your head. Do you realize you've got the person prophesying? You've probably got your own processing going on. And you know, oh, I think it means that. I think it, you know, I know by the end of a three minute prophecy, I've got it all worked out. And most of the time, it isn't what I thought it was. Exactly. And so there's multiple yeah. voices. There's yeah. a person prophesying, my own voice. And also the Holy Spirit might be saying things. And many times we've had people come and say, um, you know, you prophesied this or, or one of your team prophesied that or, you know, and it wasn't probably as encouraging as it should be. And, I, and then I'm able to say, well, uh, can we listen to the recording? And of course, when the recording's played and, and there's a check of whether that is actually what was prophesied, we find it's not prophesied. It was probably one of the uh, processing or the, uh, you know the, the voices going on, and uh, and and so it's so valuable to pro to make sure your uh, personal prophecy is recorded to bring to allow that process and and to allow God to speak to you and cultivate prophecies are never instant. Uh, they one three minute prophecy may speak into your world on a multiple basis. They may speak into your now, may speak into your six months, it may speak into your five years ago, it may speak into the next five years, it may speak into a lot of your destiny and purpose about family, about friends, about finances, about ministry. And so it's a lot to take in if it's not recorded. And so you want to you want to value prophecy enough to make sure it's recorded. I hope that's making sense yeah. to you. Yeah. And that'll make more sense as we go through the course as well over the next few weeks uh, because it, 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 we're just laying a bit of a foundation, but it will, will expand on a lot of these things for you to give you the understanding of why we believe these things are so important. Yeah, awesome. Yep. So next one, yeah. Uh, the gift of prophecy or even one functioning in the role of a prophet never supersedes the authority and ministry of the church or meeting. So that, that's that's very important because the, whoever's leading that meeting has that authority. It's their meeting, and uh, so you know, as as prophetic people or uh, a prophet, a prophet. Let me just say this right here: a prophet has different guidelines to the general assembly or the saints. So there, there's some there's some slight differences there, which we'll probably touch on over the next couple of weeks. But it is important to note that, that a mature person, a mature person with a, a gift of prophecy, won't supersede the authority of that church. They'll always stay under authority. God is a God of order. You know, he does some things sometimes it doesn't look like there's any order there. Uh, if you've been around 
in uh, in the church environment for some time. You would have seen some things in the past, but but God operates in a levels of authority, and, and so it, it's no different here. Um, you know, the gift of prophecy needs to operate under the correct uh, function of whoever's running that meeting, and the uh, and that will always be the case. Um, it, if it's a, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a, uh, a pastor running that group, whether that's a home group, uh, that person who runs that meeting is still in charge of that meeting. And that you just you can't just jump up and say, uh, look, God's given me a word. I've got to share it right now and, and keep going. That's, you've got to be provided that opportunity. Mm. And, uh, and yeah, so we just want things to be done proper. Mm. And, and because that's for the safety of everybody. And, and, and uh, unfortunately, as Laurie mentioned before, uh, the, the prophetic in, a, in some terms uh, has had a bit of a bad name because there was people who didn't operate within the proper guidelines of the way the Bible says we should operate. You know, we, we've give, just listed a few things there and, and uh, all of these are biblical. You can go and look them up. You know, um, we've got a whole Bible there that, of, of recordings of God, what Jesus said. You know, there's a lot of prophecy there. And, and we can go back and we can go and see what he says and we can go over that. So it's important. And if God's got something to say, something to me, uh, that's important. I want to know what it is so I can go back and, and read through that and work through it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah. You know, I think that's, that's important. So, mm. yeah, we need to be under authority and, and do things correctly. Mm. Um, so, that, so basically what we're, we're just showing, sharing with you here is just a summary of our guidelines. We... Um, as, as many of you know, we run a, a full school. It's a 50-hour school that is that is on pending at the moment. So hopefully at the end of the year, and many of you have actually um, registered for this already, uh, and 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 you know many of you have done some of you have done you know our schools in the past. Um, so and and, and those who have done the past know that these guidelines are um, the, you know we've um we've just summarised them and, and they're here for you to, uh, you know, just to help guide you and to help you be an effective minister. And, and I know that we're talking about the basics of hearing God's voice for yourself, but, but as we um, we'll go into a bit more detail of how the prophetic uh, gives, um, it fuels and flames hearing God's voice for yourself. There you go, hearing God's voice for yourself. There you go. <laughs> so why is this just an intro? Oh, thank you for asking. <laughs> Look, it's an intro because we want to give you a, a taste of, of how this works. We want to give you some basic foundations, some basic guidelines, uh, so that you can go away and actually do this on your own. And we're going to show you how to do that shortly. That where you can go and practice the Bible actually tells us to practice spiritual, moving in spiritual gifts. And that's how you'll become mature. And unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of people who are not mature because they're, they're not practicing hearing from God. They're not practicing, they're developing their faith. They're not saying or doing what the Bible is saying to do. So this is an intro to hopefully encourage you to step up in those things. You know, put yourself in a position where you... You know, you, you're there to get a word from God. And, and so we're going to help you to do that. And, and so that's why we're doing this over a, a couple of weeks uh, over in the next three Thursdays. Mm. I um, just found the chat box. It was that's, under the um, participants box. Yeah, yes. And so we've got a question here about um, what if, what if um, you're in a church that doesn't actually believe in prophecy? Well, um, yeah, many people have found themselves in that situation, but I, I also find that God uses lots of things in your own life to uh, to develop the prophetic and and to allow allow the brewing of that, but also be aware of the Proverbs eighteen sixteen. The gift makes room and brings you before great men. So so what what is what is the right timing and and who I, if i was you i'd be asking god who who are the prophetic tribe who are the prophetic people that i'm meant to be around and and and, and you know pray for your leaders and, and and be aware of who you're meant to be hmm. meant to be flowing with yeah yeah look i think we learn things from different people uh, certainly our, our pastor our church is there as our as our network as our as our home uh church and we have a pastor there that will look after us 
Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't learn things from other places. You know, there's there's a lot of places where you can get information and, and I, I, I'm involved in other activities as well. Uh, and, and I go to other events um, relating to those things. And it's the same with the, you know, we go to, we've probably been to every denomination there is, teaching them on how to hear God. Uh, and each one of them is different. So we adjust what we do to suit what their style. Uh, and, and so what we're saying is if your church is perhaps not as open as, as what we're teaching here and what you your uh, understanding may be, it doesn't mean that, that that's wrong. It just means that that's just be part of that. But find a, a prophetic group that you can be around or be part of that can help help you to grow and develop in that. You know, I think the the um, in the past we've always been locked into this is my church, so I learn everything here. But your church, in theory, it should have everything correct. But as a general rule, most churches will specialise in more in a specific area. Some will be very evangelistical, so they'll you know they're out there, they're getting everybody saved, and the church grows and grows and grows, and 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 often the the uh, you know that's great. People need to be saved. But people also want to be have depth. Mm -hmm. So some of those people will actually, uh, you know, go elsewhere to so they'll mature as well. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So have we done this slide? We've done this um, here because I got distracted with the chatting. Did you do this whole slide? Did you under this? Uh, so yeah, so I'm um, hearing God's yeah. voice intro yeah. and yeah. Anna. And so from here, we're asking you to be part of, this is obviously just going to be an intro tonight. And as we mentioned from one extreme to the other, the 50 hour school. So we're trying to meet it somewhere in the middle while we're all in, um, in, in our, you know, in our houses. And so uh, it's an opportunity to grow and build and to be aware of knowing God's, God's communication. So I really feel that many are sensing God wants to bring increase to the knowing of what God is doing in this time and season. And it really is so important to be lifted up in faith and see from God's perspective. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of circumstances going on around about us, but God wants to lift us up in faith and cause us to be aware of his provision and, and his insight. And, and there's a spirit of fear that's, that's roaming this earth quite aggressively and we want to be people that that do not respond to fear and mm. so uh, we want to hear God's voice in that so here are the dates here and um, for the mini seminar it's over three Thursday nights the 30th of April 7th of May the 14th of May and it's it we ask you to be committed for for the three nights because it's not going to be the same every night and it's going to build from here yeah and, and it builds from to, level to level so yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty important yeah it's not that you can't come but we're just saying you, you might feel a little disconnected or how, how, how do we do that i've missed that yeah 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 so so yeah there's the dates again and so um and just because we want a commitment we ask you to register and uh for the three nights and and it's only it's thirty dollars and and what we're going to do so ten dollars a night and and also we're going to uh uh, pass on to you, email to you um, when you register some MP3 downloads that are, will be like the activations and the practical steps and uh, and and even like a, yeah the practical prophetic activation. Uh, yeah, so it enables so you to practice at home and to mm -hmm. to go over that and say okay, uh, what do I do there again? Uh, okay, now I can listen to that and I can go and apply it. Yeah. And of course, if you've already registered, some of you have for PAS 2020, you come free because it's, you know, it's part of the- PAS, what is PAS? PAS, Prophetic Activation School. Ah. <laughs> and of course, past students, uh, you know, contact us and we'll tell you your special rate. Ah. So what else is coming up? As, as we mentioned, hearing God's voice over the three Thursday nights, there's a date there in case you missed them because we're flicking fast. But also next week, next Thursday night, we're going to do an intro on understanding dreams. And, and we found many people have, um, you know, over, over time just constantly said, when are you going to do dreams again? Because we've, we've got a recorded series of a seminar that we did a few, quite a few years ago. We haven't done an understanding dreams seminar for quite a while. So we mm -hmm. thought this is the best time. And, and again, it's, it's not just theory, it is theory and our understanding but it's also we we workshop a bit in these dreams and, and cut up somebody's dream and yeah yeah so we all, we all come in our pajamas we bring our pillow <laughs> well, we... are you in your pajamas no, no, no. no we don't do that, we don't do that. but we do you give you practical aspects and we do go through dreams of how do we interpret that and that's a lot of fun you'll find that's really 
yeah. you'll enjoy that. Yeah, That's so we'll, so I think the details are on Facebook and I'm going to send out an email on Saturday for you to re reply to so that we can send you the link uh, next Thursday. So uh, just a little bit more teaching. Um, so as we mentioned, the gift of prophecy is uh, it, as we activate the gift of prophecy in our lives. 1 Corinthians 12 unpacks for us all the different gifts, but the gift of prophecy uh, we find helps us to develop in hearing God's voice. And so this is just some, some uh, foundational scriptures that, that many of you, if you've, you've done some of our courses, you will know, and it'll be good, uh, a reminder, and it's a, it's a good foundation. So 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. A typo there, that should be an S Y. Hard to see why. But you love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So first of all, it's saying pursue love. It, that you know, God is love. Everything that comes from God is love. And so, if we, if we have maturity and bring balance to the spiritual gifts, it's going to come from the foundation of love. Yeah, absolutely. And it says to desire spiritual gifts. Well, for a lot of people, they don't even know what spiritual gifts are. And this is, this is it's not a suggestion. It's saying desire spiritual gifts. So, you know, everything we want to teach you, we want to have a Bible basis for, and we want you to go and check what we're teaching you. So it says pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So you've got to have that desire. You've got to want to go and inquire. What is that about? What, tell me about that spiritual gift. How does that work? What does it do? Um, but especially that you may prophesy. Well, what about all the other spiritual gifts? Why especially they may prophesy? You know, what about just getting a word of knowledge? Wouldn't that be easier? What about getting a word of wisdom? What is that anyway? You know, we're going to touch on those sort of things. But especially that you may prophesy. You know, that's pretty interesting just there. Mm. Especially. Especially. Yeah. yeah. And and what and what we sort of talk about and unpack even further, which we'll get to in the in, you know, in the next um, coming weeks is that, uh, you know, that pro I love the way that prophecy can involve all the gifts at, at exactly. some times, can have words of knowledge, words of wisdom and, uh, and, and you know, gifts, gifts of um, healing, uh, gift of discerning of spirits. That's right. All the gifts. Yeah. yeah. Look, I actually believe that that says there, especially that you may prophesy because that's the shortcut to all the gifts. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, you can do all the others. I think that's amazing. It's like God wrote this. <laughs> but it, it, it's just amazing, you know, uh, especially that you may prophesy. So if we, can, if we can help you to hear God's voice and to be able to prophesy, you can move in every other gift. And we'll show you that over the next few weeks. And, yeah. and so that's exciting. Yeah, and there's another scripture that's quite similar there, 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy, and do not forbid to speak with tongues. And so that, that's part of, um, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to be in us. And, and at times there can be a, a flow of the Spirit in us and, 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 a, and a gift of the Holy Spirit that causes us to, to pray in a language that we do not understand, but the Holy Spirit prays through us. Yeah. And that word desire, it, the English language actually doesn't do it a lot of justice. And, and if you think of the word desire, you know, you know, desire an ice cream or a piece of cake or coffee, uh, you know, it's a nice word, we desire things. But in actual fact, uh, that word desire, if you go back to the original Greek, is, a, is closer to the word covet. So it's more a command rather than a nice idea. So it's saying there, pursue love and covet spiritual gifts or therefore, brethren, covet earnestly. That, that's a double banger. Yeah. Not just one. Not just one desire, but two, mm, really. Yeah. And so you can understand. And, and the reason is, is it, there's a lot of power in this. There's a, there's a lot of confidence that comes when we develop the gift. And so the enemy does not want you to have confidence in hearing God's voice. Do you realise that? The enemy does not want you to have confidence in hearing, he, hearing God's voice and he wants you, the enemy wants you to be discouraged and, and, uh, and feel confused. But God wants you to have courage. God wants mm. you to know his voice. God wants you to sense his voice and see his voice and, and, uh, and, and, and prophesy, activate the gift of prophecy, which causes confidence. And, and it does take time and it takes, and we, you know, uh, because of what we've been doing for the last 20 plus years and I've and, uh, been around a lot of different prophetic ministries and supported a lot of different prophets around the world, we've sort of been able to hone, I believe, uh, the, the quickening of being able to develop this and, and, uh, and I'm 
got a lot of team here with us so that can probably testify to that as well. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to keep going. So just going to watch the time. Yep. So 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says, He who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation and comfort to men. So as I mentioned earlier, that's our guidelines. If we stay within those guidelines, that's a very, very safe place for you, bringing a word for somebody, and it's a very safe place for the person receiving it. Because if all you, all you do is going kind to of encourage someone and strengthen them and tell them how good they are, that God loves them and, you know, God wants to bring comfort and, you know, that, that you, nobody doesn't like that. You know, that's the very nature of God. You know, God will, even when he corrects us, he does it in such a way we don't even sometimes realise till after the event that he's given us a hiding. But it was a good one. I want to have more of that. Yeah. And so that's the guidelines that we're going to be using. Oh, thank you for all your comments, guys, especially about dreams and, and, uh, and your comments affirming what we're saying. Thank you for that. And uh, so 2 I'm getting distracted with the people here. Sure, that's great. <laughs> so 2 Timothy 1.6. Oh, we didn't, you didn't get to that one, did you? No. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. Stir up the gift of God. So that Paul's talking to Timothy and he's saying, I remind you to stir up the gift. Well, I think we need to be reminded at times, hey, to stir up the gift of God within us because sometimes we go about our distracting circumstantial life and forget to be in heavenly places and allow God's perspective to come into our lives and sometimes we just need to stop or maybe get into a habit of, okay, I'm going to stir up the gift of God within me because I'm going to hear God's voice. I want to hear what he's saying. I want to discern what he is saying. I want to receive what God is saying and what he has for me because he has good things for me. And sometimes we can get sort of distracted or put aside uh, for that um, from those things. So I want to remind you, God's saying, stir up the gift of God. And it's, and it's actually saying, you are, we are to stir it up. It's our responsibility to stir it up. Some people have taught or, or believed in the past that, you know, if prophetic happens or anything in, in the gifts of the spirit happens, it's, it's only if it's God's will and there's nothing we can do about it. Well, this is saying the opposite. This is saying it's up to you to stir up the gift of God. And we're going to go through some different steps to help you uh, and, and give you understanding of how to do that. And that's always yep. exciting. That's a lot of fun. Uh, this. Okay. So this is Matthew 7, 9 to 11. And so I'm just going to read it and then we'll talk about it. For what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to each of us who ask him? So it's saying there, like, you, you, we're natural human people and... and us in our natural fleshy state want to bless our kids. You know, if they come and ask for a sandwich, you're not going to give them a stone. We're going to get them a sandwich. You know, mm -hmm. if they want a, a, some, a, some fish, we're not going to give them a snake. You know, so our desire as human people, we want to give our children what's good for them. Mm -hmm. So how much more does God want to do that for us? Mm -hmm. So we, that's the very nature of God. This is highlighting the very nature of God. And so it's not just the words that are there. It's what's behind this. What's God actually saying here? This is his nature coming through. The nature of God is that he has good things for us. If we ask God something, he's going to give us what we ask for. Now, that, that's an important thing to know because we're going to be asking God for a word. We're going to be asking God, what do you want to say here? And, and so we need to know that if we ask God, he's going to answer us. And it says in the Bible, uh, ask of me and I'll answer, mm, you know, okay. depending on what version you have, there's mm. a, a different wording, but that's the principle of what's there. So we need to be confident that we can come to God, ask him a question and he's going to talk to us. Mm, yeah. And we find that's one of the keys, asking God questions when we're, when we're, by faith receiving from God. And so even in our practical time, we're going to be asking God questions and know that when we ask him a question, his nature is to respond to us. Yeah. And which brings us to the faith scripture, Hebrews 11.6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder 
of those who are diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity to please God. Do you love faith? You know, sometimes we ask the question, it's a bit of a, um, it's a bit of a trick question in a sense, you know, do you love faith? And many of us say, yeah, I love faith. Well, I've got to say to you, I've got a love-hate relationship with faith. I, I probably love the outcome, but being in faith is uncomfortable. Being in faith is a stretch. Being in faith is completely out of my comfort zone. So if you're feeling like you're comfortable, you're feeling like everything's easy, you're probably not in faith <laughs> in yeah. a way. And, uh, and so it's, um, God stretches us and builds us and grows us. And so therefore, it, uh, it, we get used to being in faith and we trust the fact that God God is a, God shows up for us when, when yeah, we're in faith. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. So that should be actually part of our lifestyle being in faith. So, and that's, you know, stretching ourselves all the time to be able to believe for more, ask God for more and, uh, and, and pushing into that faith zone for whatever you're involved in. Uh, and so, you know, it's, if we're not in faith, then we're not necessarily pleasing him. That's mm. what that verse is actually saying. Yeah. And then in Hebrews 5.14, it says, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So it says there, solid food belongs to those who are full age. So someone who's full age, that's a that's a you know, that's someone who's mature. And those who by reason of use, well, we don't say that sort of terminology anymore, but that's basically practice. Those who practice reason of use, you know, if you're if you're doing a trade, if you're an apprentice, uh, you, you do that every day. And at the end of the day, you become a mature craftsman. And so this is the same thing here. It says, if you want to be mature, then you need to practice. Who by practice have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So you can discern what God is saying. You can discern what he's not saying. God will speak to us in many different ways. And it's through practice that you will develop that. And, and we've found that over and over. It, it always takes faith. But there's a confidence that comes in knowing that God is going to show up because you've learned to develop that gift. And it's, it's like anything else. You know, we, we, we practice sports. You know, the rugby league now at the, at the moment, you know, they're out there trying to practice. They're trying to stay in shape, ready for the game that they hope is coming back. Uh, um, mm. And, you know, for the benefit of the country, we hope so. Uh, but they practice. They don't just play one game on, you know, once a week. They're out there practicing, ready for the event. Yeah. And this is what we need to do. We need to be practicing in spiritual gifts. So when there's an opportunity, we're ready. Yeah, it's good. We don't have to think, oh, what do I do here? Um, how do I do that again? Um, yeah. We're just ready to go. We're, we're on the flow. Yeah. And deals with that teaching again that some people in the past have suggested, well, if God wants it to happen, it's going to happen spiritually. It's not the way it is at all. And this scripture is saying, Practice your spiritual senses so that you can, you know, you mature in it. Yeah. So uh, that's what we, we want to we want to help you to do that. We want to help you in on ways that we you can become more mature in operating in spiritual gifts. Mm. And so one Corinthians fourteen four says, "He who speaks in tongue edifies himself, and he who prophesies edifies the church." And so we found that if you have a heavenly language or the Holy Spirit prays through you, it's it's um it, it sort of tends it activates you and it activates the Holy Spirit in you. It, it doesn't mean if you if you're don't quite pray in tongues yet or we don't have a heavenly language it, it doesn't mean you can't hear from God of course um, but we encourage you if you do have a heavenly language there's going to be a time where we're going to stir the gift up so to speak and we're and some of us will pray in, in the spirit in tongues um, language you don't know that the Holy Spirit prays through us by faith and and also some of us may just pray in English and, and focus on and, and, and focus our heart and mind and ask God questions. And so we just like to bring out this scripture because it's it talks about, you know, that um that we we it's a tongue that edifies ourselves, our, edifies oneself. And so the Holy Spirit, when we allow the Holy Spirit to stir up and to pray through us, and I want to encourage you, if you don't feel you have a heavenly tongue yet, uh, you know, again, step out in faith and practice that, even like all the other gifts. But you can you can hear God without speaking in yeah. tongues. You don't even have to be saved to hear from God. 
God will speak to you. You just got to be listening and recognize what he's saying. And so, you know, as I said, we, we've been into churches where they actually don't speak in tongues, at least not out loud. Mm. Uh, you know, we say, oh, we're going to speak in tongues and there's silence. And you think, what's going to happen? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we adjust things to suit the environment. So, but we would encourage you to build yourself up in the spirit and, and to, you know, practice speaking in tongues. Mm. That will build you. Yeah. And so Proverbs 2012 says, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made both of them. So this is highlighting, uh, how does God speak to us? Well, there's, there's all different ways. Everyone receives communication from God differently. And God loves that because he's created each and every one of us differently. So there's not really a, again, there's been some past teaching that have suggested you've got to hear God a certain way or it's not, or it's not God. Well, we don't believe that's the case. God creates each and every one of us unique and he has a wonderful special way that he wants to speak to you and give communication and so sometimes we receive communication from God with pictures they might be moving or they might be a still photo shot they might be a movie they might be in color black and white we've had lots of people uh, express their different ways that God has spoke they might be like in the Bible writing on a wall there might be a, a cartoon or a, or a, someone I think had sepia once or, or you know it's yeah. color and what is it a color yeah it's, yeah. Like, a, yeah. <laughs> the, it's like the photo. old fashioned yeah. photos you know the sepia where it's the, the darker uh, not as not as clear, like the yeah. old style photos you know yeah the wild west and so there's so so some some people are you know receive communication by pictures in all those different forms some have a couple of different photo shots but some have a movie flow or someone some have just one picture that's forms and goes into a different form some people hear from god like an inner not necessarily in what everyone else can hear, but it's an inner, still, small voice. And you hear you hear a small voice speaking to you. And so it's almost so still at times. And, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, you've got, to, you, you've got to trust it. It's always that area of faith where we learn to, the more we practice it, the more we recognise, ah, that was God. And, and so some of us sense what God's saying or feel. It's like an internal feeling or an internal sensing. And, and so uh, as, we, uh, and as we deliberately develop the gift or develop in hearing God's voice and, and receiving and identifying the communication that he has for us, we can actually develop all the other areas. And, and it's also, it's wonderful to be able to uh, look into that. Hmm. So that's like a knowing, isn't it? That sensing. We, we, we feel it or we just know. Well, how do you know? Well, I don't know. I just do. And, and so it's recognising that sort of thing. Yeah. Just saying. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we actually want to um, do some practical now and, and we're going to, uh, what I want you to be aware of is that we're going to um, do um, uh, uh, just in, a, in still in a group environment for the next um, you know, five to 10 minutes. And then after that, uh, we're going to have a quick break and then um, and go into groups. But, but just be aware of um, uh, the presence of God, and and I feel like you know God is is um, going to activate some things in people's lives. Um, so so we can't see your faces, but we just trust now that Father, we thank you. We thank you. Your presence just comes and uh, meets each and every person where they're at. We thank you right now for your presence and your mm. power surrounding. Uh, surrounding each person and and father we thank you that you want to speak even in your in 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 that soft way in a sense yet a clear way and and develop each and every one of us in hearing your voice and so i just want to read out a um a, a scripture here do you think we have time for this mm. uh, i think yeah. go through it and then we can sing it yeah. out yeah, awesome. So yes, yeah, so so uh, so from the feeding the five thousand, many people have um, you know you know the you know this parable, the story here of the feeding the five thousand. Luke nine ten to seven. 
16 and it says, and the apostles, when they had returned, told him all that they had done. They took them and went aside privately into a deserted place to the city called Bethsaida. But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who had been, who need healing. When the day began to wear away, the 12 came and said to him, send the multitudes away that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provision for we're in a deserted place here. Uh, verse 13, but he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy food for those people. For there were about 5,000 men. So closer to 10,000 people. That's then, a grocery bill, isn't it? Yes. Then he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves, two fishes, and looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them out to the disciples as set before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled and 12 baskets of leftover fragments were taken up by them. So, uh, so it's a bit of a, a story that we... Um, that we can even use to ask God questions in. Can I have a little bit of music? I want to encourage you to, to if you can, just to uh, to block everything out around you, close your eyes, and and, and we're gonna just be aware of even using this story uh, in in your imagination. God's given us imagination, right? And um, and so I just want you now to just close your eyes, become aware of the presence of God. It's got a little bit too loud. I'm just going to have a little bit of black background music. Close your eyes. Be aware of the feeding of the 5,000. Imagine if you were there. Imagine being in the presence of a miracles that have just taken place. There were lots of miracles beforehand, but then... 10,000 people were fed with, with just a few loaves and a few fishes and, and there was a miracle that took place. And, and so be aware right now of, of being in that place if you can for a moment. Yet let your imagination go there. What would it be like to be there? What would it be like to be in the presence of Jesus? What would it be like to, uh, to be even uh, the excitement of the disciples, hear and sense and smell, smell the fish air, smell the bread, there's still leftovers, more leftovers than what was started with. Everyone's excited. Children are laughing and, and talking. So be aware of the atmosphere of that if you can for this moment in your imagination. Be aware of being in the presence of Jesus. And even as, a, as, a, as you're on a, on a hillside, it, it suggests, you know, next to the sea, be aware of Jesus slightly far off, maybe on, um, in a higher place than you on the hillside above, above you a little bit. And you, from afar, watch him and, uh, and admire him. Be aware of the presence of Jesus, if you can. Hopefully you're able to engage in this um, activity at the moment with your eyes closed, just even in your imagination, being aware of the crowds, the noise, the hustle, the, the um, children gathering and, uh, and, and laughing and, and mothers gathering up their children. But at this time, you look at Jesus and, and just to the, the gratefulness to be in the presence of Jesus, even afar off. If you can look for Jesus on the hillside and admire him and, and, and ask yourself, what would it be like to be here with him now? What, what is it like? What would it be like to be in the presence of Jesus? And as you're aware of the crowd starting to disperse around about you, children are laughing, mothers are gathering, gathering their children, people are saying goodbye and excited of the day, people are starting to disperse quite quickly they've been fed and it's been a long day and people are dispersing but there's something in you that doesn't want it to end and 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 you want to stay in the presence of Jesus and as you look towards Jesus it's as though he is all of a sudden looking at you he turns and he looks at you and as a natural response you turn around and and uh, you know um, wonder who he's looking at behind you but then you look back again, it's like it is, it's, it's you that he's looking at, it would seem. And he uses his hand and, and beckons you, beckons you to come to him. 
and, and you start to make your way through the crowd towards Jesus. And, and the crowd is dispersing around you, going in the opposite direction of you, but you're heading towards Jesus, just in case it's actually you that he's beckoning to him with his hand. You're getting closer to Jesus now. And it seems he's still got his eyes locked in on you. And, and you can sense he's, just even with his facial expressions and his smile towards you, he's actually looking forward to you getting closer to him. The crowd is dispersing. There's noise around you, but it's almost like a, a, there's only one thing you're focused on now, being close to Jesus. And his hand reaches out towards you, stretching out because you're getting closer now. And he lays hold of your hand. And it, with his hand motion, he beckons you to walk with him away from the crowd. What is that like? What is it like to have Jesus hold your hand and cause you to walk with him? And then he walks with you to the other side of the hill and he motions you with his hand to sit down. What is it like to be in the presence of Jesus? Allow that to touch your heart. What is it like to have Jesus holding your hand? What is it like? And his, his arm is around you. His arm is touching you. And you look at him in his eyes and you say to him, Jesus, what do you want to say to me? So trust what comes to you, whether it's a picture, whether it's words, whether it's sensing. What is coming to you now, Jesus? What do you want to say to me? Trust the picture, trust the words, trust the sensing. And quite a few things might be coming to you now, whether it's a picture or a word or a sensing. Make sure you write that down. Make sure you keep it because I believe that even activating this, this moment is going to cause you to, to build it even more so. This is one of the activations that you can do on your own. Lord, what do you want to say to me? Ask the question. Thank you, Lord. What else, Lord? What do you want to say to me, Lord? What are you showing me at the moment? Some of you may want to ask a more specific question. Lord, what do you want to say to me about a certain thing or a relationship? What do you want to say to me about my finances? Mm. Trust the pictures, trust the words, trust the sensing. Just be in that moment for a few minutes. I'm just going to give you a few minutes to even write down what you feel God might be saying to you. If it's just a picture, write down the pictures. Lord, what else? What else do you want to say to me? I hope you're receiving something. I hope you're receiving a picture, a word, a mm. sensing. And, and this is something that we can practice in our own space, even allowing a Bible story or just a, something to get our mind occupied 
to ask God questions. Lord, what else do you want to say to me? Pictures, words, sensing, still small voice. just going to give that one more minute for you to write down what you feel God might be showing you. Thank you, Lord. So we call this journaling with God, writing down, asking questions, trusting what comes to us. And the more often you do this, the easier it gets and the more accurate you get. It's really a, an important tool as, as you develop in hearing God's voice.